I hate contacts because uh, they really haven't seen a whole lot of innovation. If you go to contacts.google.com, which is where all my contacts are, or even if you use Facebook, uh, Facebook is a, a big improvement over that, but so many people are pr uh, freaked out by privacy that they just don't put their data into, the fa into Facebook. And so we need a new way to deal with contacts on our phone, and it's called Human. I love this app. I want you to see it and try it right now. Who are you? <laughs> it's quite the question. Yeah. Uh, so Robert, my name is Encore Jane. I'm the CEO of Human. Uh, and prior to this was the founder and CEO of the Cairo Society. But now, happy to be here in San Francisco working on this new company. Yeah. Uh, l let's just talk about what it is. Uh, there was a lot of hype about it last week because uh, everybody was talking well, we about it. We officially launched last week. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's funny. You, you said it earlier, but when you look at smartphones today, the one thing that hasn't actually changed since, I mean, our first flip phone, if you remember those, is our actual phone and contacts app, right? It, yeah. takes, it actually takes everybody you know since you first started entering contacts and puts them in an alphabetical list. And that's how it remembers all of our relationships. But the fact is, the way we remember people naturally isn't through a list, it's yeah. contacts. You're the guy I met who works at Rackspace, who I met today, who lives in San Francisco. These are the ways that we remember people. The question is, could we make your phone and contacts app think that way? Yeah. And a lot of people, people who use contacts a lot um, realize this problem. But if you have, let's say, a thousand names in, your, in Google contacts right. or Apple contacts, um, they're rotting. <laughs> and because, uh, let's say I have a business card from you from 10 years yes. ago, you don't have the same phone. You don't have the same email, probably. Right. You don't have the same uh, title. You don't have the same job. You, you might not even live in the same town. Right? And you might I, you, not even remember me, and that's one of the craziest things, right? Yeah. You, you might go through your list and say, who is this guy, Anker? Why is he even in my list, right? And if you could open that contact and start to see things the way you remember me. So first, my picture, because our brains are really, really good at facial recognition, right? Yeah. So if you could just open your contact and it shows my photo, it shows you where I currently work and my current title, and all of the context of where we met, where we last saw each other, what, all that information. Show, show people what it looks like in yeah. Human. So take a look. So now when you open Human, you'll see that instead of a list, you actually see the faces of the people you want to contact most. And from your favorites, you're able to do simple things like call or text with just a swipe. But the biggest shift is that now, your contacts are no longer just a phone number. When you open it, you'll see that their face shows up right at the top with all of the context of the ways you remember them, where you're next seeing them, where you last saw them, where you first met them. Context like the people you know well in common versus just random mutual friends on Facebook or the fact that they work at a company with people you know, right? Yeah. And you're able to reach out to them in any form, whether it's FaceTime or email or text, right from this single app. But what's really cool is that now when you go to your contacts app, we've cleaned up that massive, messy list you have yeah. into a simple search bar. So if I forget someone's name, which happens to me all the time, I can do something as simple as saying, hey, who was it that I met last week? and just run that search and have all those people pop up. Yeah, so I got a lot of business cards. Here, here's a business card I just got, right? Executive Vice President from Nestle. Nice, <laughs> nice business card, Pat Patrice, right? So I'll scan this with some scanner and put it into my contacts, but this thing is uh, now rotting and it's right. not useful like this. Correct. Now, um, a lot of people are wondering why do I get these emails from human to verify? Yeah. This, this contact information. Well, so first, there's two problems we're solving for you, right? This whole business card mentality is going to disappear in the next couple of years. Yeah. And starting with simple things that we've done on human, like making it so easy to actually add a contact that you don't have to go through, take that card home, get it lost in your pockets or in your bags, and then scan it. It's really as easy as just entering their phone number or email, and we'll actually pull in the rest of the information for you, including mutual friends. <clears throat> so you think about how often you play the name game with somebody. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Hey, do you know John or Jake? Well, human will actually show you the mutual friends you have in common 
right when you meet. So you, uh, how, how do you figure that out? Is it LinkedIn and Facebook? Yeah, so or? it's through all the different social networks and other areas that we can map that out, right? You may be surprised that you may have been CC'd on an email with them from like a year ago that you've completely forgotten about it. When you meet them, it'll pull in those mutual friends even from that email. Oh, wow. Um, so now, so, so this, t this is where I'm having this fight with the privacy <laughs> freaks, right? Because the privacy freaks are, whoa! <laughs> I don't want to give access to my Facebook and yep. my email and my LinkedIn and my Twitter, <laughs> right? And, and maybe even uh, some location <laughs> information, right? Because this actually shows when friends are, are visiting my town, yes. right? So it's really interesting, Robert. One of the things that people are being told right now in the tech space is, if you want contextual intelligence, you have to give up your data. It's this kind of double-edged sword. Take yeah. one, give up the other. What we realize is that you can actually have both because our phones are so powerful today that you can connect with all of your data, like your emails and your calendars, and do the contextual processing on the device itself. So what that means is that when you connect your email to human, none of your emails, none of your passwords, none of your auth tokens ever even touch our servers. So if the NSA were to hack us or if some bad guys overseas were to hack us, that data never existed on our servers, but you still get all of that benefit here on the device. Okay. So, um, so what is this verified email? Back, back to that, yeah. because that's freaking out some people, because it, sure. lo it looks like spam. And, I, and usually I don't even let entrepreneurs like you on the show. Oh, uh, you're hurting my feelings. Well, because <laughs> I can't stand getting these spams on SMS spam and email. Uh, now, you guys don't sp send SMS, but like Glide and uh, a few others have done this to me sure. in the past, and I complain bitterly <laughs> about them. But this is the first time I made an exception because it really does improve my contact list to have you verify. So sure. explain what this verify well, so, email is and how it works. <laughs> so when you're bringing together all of your contacts into one place after years of having them rot, be separate in all these different areas, you suddenly start to realize just how much useless information you have. In fact, the majority of your contacts don't even have reachable information. So you may find now through human that you do actually know somebody who works at Google when you search or who lives in you know, Kansas City when you go there for a business trip. But now you try to reach out to them and it's a dead end. Yeah. And that's the most frustrating thing in the world. So one of the problems we set out to solve was could we actually update all that information for you? And so we built a system that makes it really, really simple. So in 30 seconds, you could say, hey, I have all this information. Is this still up to date? And through human now, you can actually choose the contacts individually that you want to update information for. They get a simple email from you with the information you have, and they can choose if they want to mark things out of date, to replace it, or to add new information. And they only have to do it once. Once they do it, it'll auto-update, and it'll fill it into your address book for you. So now you can see things like, I mean, it's crazy. I was actually with one of our friends in China who I hadn't spoken to in a while, and I was trying to reach out, couldn't find him, so I asked to verify his info. And suddenly, you can see on my screen, they suddenly mapped out all the wrong information, right information in one place. Yeah. <clears throat> and the amount that that helped for me, I mean, we now reconnected, I'm actually gonna go visit them in Hong Kong. Yeah. Um, I wish, by the way, uh, when it, on that list, you saw some had a red uh, X next to them, yeah. which means it's not uh, up-to-date information. Right. I wish I could swipe and get rid That's, of those and clean out my It's actually a really good idea. We'll, we'll add that. Excellent. Because <laughs> uh, my contact list is so messed up. Yeah, we'll, we'll even, maybe and, we should uh, even add like a single button for you to make it easy to clear everything out. Yeah, that would be <laughs> really awesome. But it's really important for people to realize that when you do this verify process, one, that data still isn't stored on our servers, and that's really important because I know that's a concern people have. Um, it's actually updating directly into your address book for you. Uh, and for, for basically all that information is coming from wow. the person using human. So it's a pretty unique technology we've built. And what's also great is that you only have to do it once. Now, so, how, how does it, okay, because there's, I'm <laughs> sure there's some people who try human, say it's a crappy app and uninstall no, it, delete it. Oh, that happens even <laughs> yeah. to the best apps, right? No, people uh, delete Facebook. We always have a way to go in building this app. Um, so if, if you verify and then you delete the app, the data is not on your server. So how does it update my, uh, my, so, my contact? So what we've done is we've actually created proxies for everything. So this is, gets a little bit more technical. But what we realize is there's certain types of data 
that are high risk for consumers. Yeah. So if somebody gets access to your email messages, that's high risk private information. Your auth tokens, which are your emails and passwords you use when you log into Gmail or Facebook, most companies, including all the mail apps you see out there and messaging apps, they actually store those auth tokens on their servers. And so even if they tell you they don't keep your messages, if anybody hacks that auth token, they have full reign of your account to do whatever they want. Wow. So what we said with Human is those auth tokens should also never go to our servers, and so we actually keep the auth tokens locally on your phone. So if you get another device, you have to reauthorize that device directly so that it's a permission controlled experience. I didn't even realize that. Uh, Google, Google and Facebook and Twitter have app pages where they, can, where they, where they list all the apps that have access. Right. So if you delete those uh, apps, then the auth tokens turn bad. Correct. And so you're protected again. That's Correct. one reason, by the way, that I go through those pages every, literally every month and delete apps I no longer use. Yep. Because it re, re- Did I just hear Robert say he does something for privacy? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't care if you see my email. Please answer some if you, if you do see <laughs> I'm 900 unread. I need some help here. But I don't want you to get my bank account. I don't want you to get my passwords. Yep. There are certain things that I uh, want to control. I don't exactly. really care about my privacy that much, but the uh, control is privacy, right? And that's the key, right? It's this is my key. argument with the, with the privacy people. They're a crying wolf about the stupidest little things like uh, <laughs> Messenger. Uh, don't even get me started. <laughs> How, how bad the privacy industry has treated Messenger. But they are crying wolf on every damn app. Right. And therefore, when somebody actually does get into something important, like a credit card or a password uh, store, they have no uh, authority anymore. They have right. no credibility in the industry to, to actually cry wolf when the, when the wolf is at right. the door. Right. You know? But this is also responsibility on us as tech entrepreneurs, right? Yeah. Because too often, people have taken advantage of the fact that consumers don't understand what's happening. Yeah. And so a lot of the backlash you're seeing is because of a few bad apples. And it's really not that different from Wall Street, right? Yeah. You have a few guys who take advantage of the system, but they create a bad reputation for everybody on Wall Street. Yeah. And we're starting to see that a little bit in the tech space because a few bad players take advantage of things, right? Yeah. And I think the most important thing for us and in, in the conversations you're bringing up is, we have to force ourselves to be honest about what we're actually doing yeah. and what the risks are. And uh, so many people are not practicing good security. Right. Uh, for instance, they're not using strong passwords. They're not using different passwords for each uh, system. Right. They're not using two-factor authentication um, and on and on. And, yeah. and they're not cleaning out their auth to- token lists. Right. So their, their surface area is wide open for attacks, yeah. right? And it's a, big, it's a big issue, and it's one of the reasons why with Human, we actually don't even use user-generated passwords, because if we do that and we store a user-generated password on our server, it's just as bad as any other security violation you could have created, because it becomes that much easier to hack into your account. Let's go, and, uh, okay, so we covered <laughs> privacy enough. I, if you want to talk about more, we're right. both on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have roped me into more Facebook conversation over the last few days than I think I've been in since I started Facebook. I, I know a few people there. <laughs> um, what are you using uh, location for? Because I think that's uh, what you're doing with location is really interesting. Yeah, so again, we want to act as your external memory for people. Yeah. Right? And what we found is one of the ways you remember people most is by where you met them or when you met them, et cetera. So one of the cool things with human is whenever you add a contact, rather than adding some silly note in the subject line, the company line, like Robert from San Francisco, Rackspace and like the title, all these crazy mess, all you have to do is enter the phone number. We'll, we'll find the place you met. We'll use the GPS for that. We'll use the time using the calendar. We'll look at the company information from LinkedIn or Facebook and pull that in automatically. So we've made that entire process automatic and simple. So later I can just go back and say, who was it that I met in San Francisco? Yeah, um, and cool. we also created a really cool feature to kind of drive those serendipitous contextual moments. So nobody I think has really bought in at mainstream scale this idea of share my location there because there is an element of creepiness to that. Yeah. But I think something that everybody loves is you happen to be in a city like you're traveling to DC and another one of your contacts happens to be in DC at the same time. Well, with human, you can actually opt in to say, if I'm in the same town as a contact, let us know and create that serendipitous moment. And so like, if you look right now on my human, when I open it up and I slide, 
some of my contacts actually pop up who are visiting town who chose to share that. And now I can meet up with them for a quick coffee just with a swipe and a text. Yeah. Like that. Now that's crazy. Um, where else should I go with this? Well, so here's something that's really cool yeah, yeah. that I think it's worth talking about. If we can actually slowly, and we have a long way to go, but if we can build human to actually remember people the way you do, which is essentially a search engine problem, right? Yeah. Then the impact we can have on putting people in context of your different parts of your life get really exciting, right? Because on your phone, I want to search for the people I've recently talked to. It's my call log. The people who live in the city I'm in and show me different people on a Friday night than a Monday morning, yeah. right? But then you maybe get into your car and you wanted to search for the person you're meeting next and load it into the GPS, right? Yeah. Or maybe it's a different device. And so as we build this- no, I'd, lo I'd love to see you make a deal with a, like Glimpse so you, I can just click on your name and tell you my location yep. and tell you that I'm running late for a meeting or something like, yeah. like I was running late for years. <laughs> um, some things, uh, and, and people asked uh, on, on the post last night, uh, Android, when is yeah. it coming? So Android will be coming out in a few weeks. Okay. Um, I think we're, we're all pretty excited to share and publicly announce what's going to be on Android because the amount we can do on an Android phone is even greater with even less friction. Yeah. And what, what else did uh, people ask? Um, here's one. So uh, some people have different email addresses for different groups of people. Like yes. I might give you one email address, I might give my coworkers a different email address, and I might give right. uh, my wife a different email address um, so that they can come yep. into different inboxes at different priority levels and stuff like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Uh, do you, if I have the, the one email address that you give me, and Rocky has a different one. Do we both see both the email addresses? No, 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 no. So again, back to the whole security and privacy piece, we actually never share information with people that they don't already have. Okay. So that's number one, that's really critical. And what the users can do, so let's say I have a personal email and a work email. When, I, when you ask me to verify, and let's say five other contacts have asked me to verify my info, I can choose to say anybody who had this old school email, don't give them anything new, just tell them this is invalid. Anybody who had my old work email, replace it with my new work email, but don't share anything else. Got it. And anybody who had my old personal email who I chose to give to, I want them to have this new personal email. Got right? it. So it gives you that customizability in a really simple that to use form. That wasn't clear in the beta, but I think uh, it's, it's gotten yeah, it's, better. It's, you know, it's funny, we've, we've, we had a surprisingly large response to our beta, yeah. which is obviously a great feedback mechanism for us. And, and that feedback loop actually helped us improve most of the features to App Store, and we're now continuing can, to do that. Can so. I re-verify now? Uh, is there a way for me to re-verify and, and add some of my old phone numbers to do exactly what you're talking about? Because I, uh, I think I, I re just re-deleted them. Yeah, there. absolutely. So anybody who has, if someone has new information for you, we, you'll get another note saying, hey, here's some additional stuff you haven't yet verified, okay. and you'll be able to update it. Okay. Um, what else do I, do you uh, go into my Google contacts and update Google contacts with the new yeah. information that so, a human has? Yeah, so really has? cool. We actually do sync back to your iOS, which then syncs to whichever services you're using. Got it. Um, there's, there was some comments on your Facebook asking about that. So just to clarify, there's a currently a delay in the sync right now. Okay. But we're pushing a fix for that next week. So it will sync. There's just currently a potential delay in that. Some, some people's instant, people have more contacts, it's a little slower. Uh, to yeah. maybe for you, uh, but by next week that'll all be fixed. I'd love that uh, feature so I can delete old crap from uh, we'll, my we'll friends. We'll definitely get that in that'll there. That'll really help me uh, uh, get rid because <laughs> some of my friends I have 20 phone numbers because they get a new phone every week or something. <laughs> I don't know you what know. kind of friends you're hanging out with government agents. Chris Voss. Or... <laughs> Chris Voss of the Chris Voss show. <laughs> no, he tests, uh, he, he gets uh, different phones from different manufacturers and he has a different phone number every week, Got like it. literally. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll have to, I'll teach you. The other cool thing to note, by the way, is Human is actually the first app on the iPhone that can replace the phone app yeah. because we've actually worked with the carriers to set up. We should up. talk about that because there's a whole bunch of features like voicemail in yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, it seems so obvious and simple and you wonder why it hasn't been done before, but Apple's sandbox actually doesn't allow apps usually to become the new voicemail missed call phone system. Got it. So we worked with the carriers to set up our own workaround essentially where now if you do choose to like human you want to make it your default phone, you can make it pretty easily now capture all your missed calls, voicemails directly in app. So all the functionality you're used to in your phone now lives in human. Yeah. How are you going to make a business out of this? Because it's a, a fun app, but uh, 
you know, it's, yeah. well, think it's about, hard to make a, a, a buck when you're giving it away for free. Yeah. No, 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 of course. And look, this is where things get really exciting because when you think about solving this core problem of contacts the way you remember them, it's actually the fundamental social layer for the future of connected devices. We don't longer use social networks on a phone. We have social media tools to browse content. But the social network is your contacts. And so you think about as you grow, I and mean, you know this being a Rackspace platform company, but all of the apps that want to interact with the social layer will now be running off your contact system. And if they can pull in contextual information, so maybe now your mobile payment system wants to pull up the contacts who live in your current city, who you owe money to, and display them in that app with a simple query, human could be the company that powers that. Got it. How were you funded? How, uh, how did you get the capital to build this app? Yeah. And, uh, so we, we raised a, a little bit of money from angels, but for the most part, just truly building it out with a smart team. Very cool. Well, I can't see wait, uh, wait to see what you're doing next. I, uh, it's one of those apps that's on my home screen. So awesome. congrats on that. Yeah, thanks for all the support, Robert. Uh, thank you very much. And I hope all your, uh, your fans will give it a try on the App Store. And uh, what's your website address it's again? It's human.com, H-U-M-I-N.com. Yeah, thank you very much. Right, thanks so much. That was awesome.